Hello everyone, Andrew White's my name and welcome back to my painting of Otago in the South Island of New Zealand. And I uh, hope you've been enjoying my, um, my tubes so far. Uh, tubes is a fancy word for little video clips by the way, if you hadn't quite figured that out yet, but I'm sure you have. Um, today, what am I going to do? Well, as you can see, I'm down to this stage with the painting. Um, I've uh, built the um, texture into the, uh, the, the hills around the peninsula area here and uh, I'm now going to start working on the um, mid-ground or foreground layers through here. Uh, what I'm going to be doing today is quite simple really. I'm just going to be blocking this out with a series of different colours that I can work on. Um, getting slightly darker as I get closer towards the, uh, the foreground just to give my painting some depth. So um, you won't see a, a lot of action in this, uh, in this particular clip, um, but I will show you some cool photographs along the way of our trip down through the, um, that part of the world, uh, the South Island of New Zealand, and uh, you'll really quite enjoy those, I'm sure. So in between painting, I'll, uh, I'll tell you the story of how uh, this painting came to be, which will be pretty cool. Okay, so let's get on with it. First of all, let me show you the photograph that I'm working from, and I'm not sure whether you got a good view from it last time, I probably didn't. I'm working on the way my cameras are set up, and when I can afford it I'll get another little HD camera that focuses um, directly on the paint so that you can see it mixing properly. But this is um, the view across the peninsula that I'm working on for this painting here. As you can see the foreground has a series of, um, uh, of levels. Um, some lovely texture in the hillside, some bracken and some fern. Almost like a Scottish scene, isn't it? Uh, that part of the world, Dunedin, is a, a Scottish settlement, in fact. Um, and Otago region is, uh, was settled by the Scottish people ooh, over 100 years ago in New Zealand. And um, it's still a relatively um, young country, haven't we? As opposed to the UK, where things are so ancient and so old. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to mix up some colour through here. Um, I'm looking for I'm looking for a um, a deep a deep green, warmish kind of a green, maybe a dark olive green to work from through here. This will be for my base colours. This is quite cool, isn't it? My rubbish bin uh, doubles as my um, my stand for my photos that I'm working from. Olive green. That's a gambling olive green, that one. Got another one here somewhere too. Chromium oxide green. That might be quite useful as well. What greens have I got here? Terra verte. Hmm, that could do with uh, that could be used to warm it up. Maybe a little bit of yellow and brown as well. I'll use a fairly thick heavy brush for this to get it on. See that's not really that thick and heavy, is it? It's fairly light. Hopefully my camera angle is better than my last lot of photos for my head cam. I want you to really see the paint as I'm mixing it. So I'm going to lean over, that's what I'll do. Cool, I think I've got it sussed now. Slowly getting there. Thanks for your patience. Right, what are the colours that I've had previously mixed up? I've just pushed these out of the deep freeze. Paint, of course, doesn't freeze. Um, oil paint needs a temperature a lot lower than zero degrees to freeze. It still has a bit of a crust on top of it, some of it. But, uh, waste not what not, I'll fish out what I can out of uh, some of darker colours amongst what I've got here. There really isn't much there to play with to be honest. Lots of emerald green. That was from the last session wasn't it? Let's see what we can do with some olive green. It's a lovely colour isn't it? Hope you can see that. I said that last time didn't I? Till I get really with it you probably can't see a heck of a lot. But I'll explain it to you as we go along. Put a little bit of that with it as well. The idea is just to throw paint at it, see where it ends up. Particularly, want a sort of a dark, warm, 
green. So I might have to throw some blues at it. See where it goes. Some blue black maybe. Probably a possibility. Oh, here we go. It's gone noisy on me again. My little towel. Definitely needs some mix. This is Archival Oils Odorless Lean Mix, which contains quantitative amounts of linseed oil, I imagine. Oh, I'm doing this in the morning before it gets too hot. It's days, the last few days have been really warm. New Zealand doesn't get as hot as Australia does, but it certainly does amp up when the hot air blows across the Tasman from Australia, which is what's happening now. So it's mid-January and it'll stay warm until the end of February, probably. Cool down maybe mid-March, early March into our winter, which is July, June, July, August. Good, looking good. Probably still not really dark enough. I'm going to have to really amp that back with something else. And this is where the good old Prussian blue comes in handy because this will dominate anything and turn anything into everything. Is that not the, really the way to, good way of saying it really is it? Anything into everything? Last of the great narrators I tell you. So we're ending up with a, a dark, a dark green colour. This is where I'll throw some, um, put some vanilla with it. I think dampen it back that way. Trouble finding it last time, didn't I? Probably need to buy another fresh tube of it. To be honest, I seem to be running out. To my last little bit there. Where's my... Aha, uh -huh, here they are. Mm-hmm. Vice grips. The perfect way of getting the last drop out of the tube. Oh, check that out. That's got it moving. Squeeze them up a bit. These are the best tool in the world for this. Put some red with it. That'll get me a get me what I'm after. There we go. That's tube is, that tube is now almost dusted. Might be able to get one more drop out of it yet though, so I'm not throwing it away just yet. Last of the mean stingy artists. Waste not, want not. That's fast expensive, we know that. Especially the vermilion. For some reason they really like to put the price on that one. Let's see what I end up with here. When mixing your paint, don't be afraid to really get in there and stir it up. Stomp on it and splash it around. Watch it go on the carpet, tread it through to the bedroom. It ends up on the bathroom mirror sometimes, and I don't know how it gets there, but it does. It's gonna tell you about the story of this painting, Otago Peninsula. Yeah, see if I can snap up a few little photos for you. Some photos of uh, Dunedin. In Central Otago. Beautiful highland country, lovely mountains, beautiful mountains in the South Island of New Zealand. 
They're called the Southern Alps. They run down the entire spine of the island for about oh, a thousand kilometers, I suppose. Culminating in a, in a beautiful wilderness area called Fiordland, which is, as you can imagine, comprised of fjords or little inlets from the sea. On the other side of the island is the Otago area, which is where we are here. Now you might have heard of the big earthquake that New Zealand experienced in um, Christchurch recently. That was about... Sorry, my... Securing my picture on the back has gone AWOL on me. I'm too tight. You might have heard of a big earthquake uh, in Christchurch uh, last year. Claimed the lives of over a hundred people. It's quite devastating really. Destroyed the um, beautiful Christchurch Cathedral. It was a lovely, beautiful building. And most of Christchurch, the central CBD was absolutely flattened by the earthquake. Beautiful old buildings that were built when New Zealand was first colonised by European people. The Dunedin, which is where this painting is, is about two or three hundred kilometres south of the affected area and uh, wasn't so affected by the earthquake because it wasn't centred in this area. It's quite a historic area of New Zealand, the east coast of the South Island. Home to the albatrosses, as we showed you before, which live out in this area here. And so what I'm doing here is just blocking out the canvas. Just using this um, deep green colour for a start, and then I'll work on it from there. To thin it down just a little bit more with some archival lean mix. Kathy and I had a month down the South Island when I was on the journey to, um, to capture these paintings. Um, we stayed in our van. Definitely not a flash setup. We didn't have a, a nice expensive camper van. We can't afford that. So we, I, I had a four-wheel drive Delica van, a Mitsubishi van. I put a um, divan in the back of it, so we could put all our stuff underneath the uh, underneath the seat, and it was um, oh, it was great, a lot of fun. And being four wheel drive, I never got stuck once, and although I don't do anything too extreme when I'm travelling alone, without another vehicle in the convoy, because uh, you, know, you don't want to be stuck out somewhere in the middle of a stream or something. So yeah, got to be careful with these things. We went to a place called the Catalans. Show you some photos of the Catalans. Uh, this is a rugged coastline on the east coast of New Zealand. Beautiful waterfalls here, just lovely. Beautiful for photography. 
It doesn't have the higher mountain peaks, but what it does have is something really quite special, and that's virgin native forest that goes right down to the sea. And these amazing caves called cathedral caves. I'll show you a photo of it here. Here's Kathy standing inside the entrance. And you go inside the cave, it's a sea cave, you go inside one end of it and come out the other on the, on the beach. You can only get to it at low tide, or within a few hours of low tide. And when there's spring tides running and that sort of stuff, then you can't get to it at all. So you've got to have good timing to get there. So if you want to visit Cathedral Caves in the Catlins, make a day of it, enjoy it, and plan it, because otherwise it possibly wouldn't happen. It's a, the Catlins is an area of, the, um, of New Zealand that a lot of people don't visit, really, because it's off the beaten track. So there's not a lot of tourists here. A lot of locals getting about their business, a lot of farming goes on there. But the tourists don't really go there. But it is a, it is a gem of New Zealand. And if you can possibly fit a trip to at least Nugget Point in the northern area of the Catlins into your, uh, into your itinerary, which is probably the most touristy um, part of it, then I suggest you do. I'm going to lean this right back. Now, as you can see, I'm running out of paint. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to change the tone a little bit more. Bring a little bit more yellow into it, I think. Oh, bring that over there. Go, honeysuckle tea trolley. It's actually made of New Zealand rewarewa wood, which is what we for honeysuckle. It's my grandmother's. Isn't it beautiful? Now it's covered in paint. But I've already renovated this once before, so I guess I'm going to have to do it again one day. Put some gold ochre with this. It'll warm it up a bit. Hmm. See how we go with that. That's it. Colour mixing is experimenting. It's one of the really enjoyable parts of oil painting. Oh, it's all pretty enjoyable, but yeah, I really like it. It's fun. Just as well I'm not colour blind, otherwise it just wouldn't happen really. Well, it might, but it'd end up looking a bit, bit like Monet when he had his cataracts. <laughs> Some funny today. So where else did we go in the South Island? Okay, well I'll show you some photos of an area up the northern end of the South Island, which is uh, Abel Tasman National Park. Talking about gold, this is a renowned area because of its golden sands. One of the, well the only area in New Zealand I've ever discovered like that, but maybe there's others. Um, it's a national park. It's a real treasure, it has a beautiful coastline, and it's lovely and warm too, because um, of its location, it's nice and sheltered from the cold winds. And The sand's golden because of them, are literally made of fool's gold, ferrous oxide, which runs out of the hills around there. It gives the beaches this beautiful golden colour, and then you top that off with the lovely emerald blue sea, and you really have a really majestic landscape. And I'm gonna do some more paintings around the area. One day. Now it really didn't make too much of a difference there. I need a little bit, uh, a little bit more supercharging going on to get what I want. Stick heaps of gold with it, that's what I'll do. See what happens then, shall we? Give it a really good squirt. What have I been doing lately? Um, as you know, I'm a photographer as well. well. I am at least for a few more years. Um, shooting weddings, middle of our wedding season. Quite a few weddings to do this summer, two coming up this weekend. 
I enjoy it. My wife assists me. We go along and we have fun. We go to some beautiful locations and some lovely venues. And I've uh, become quite re renowned for it, really. So, work seems to come our way, which is good. It's not as good as it used to be in terms of you got to hunt for the jobs now, you really do. And you got to you got to really work hard to get them. Pricing's a big thing as well. The world of digital photography is not what it used to be, or well, photography in general is not what it used to be. Cuz there's so much free stuff online. And uh, there's a lot of new photographers, particularly in the in the wedding photography industry, out there competing for the dollar. So it's, uh, it can be difficult, but you just got to do really, really good work and be passionate about what you do and uh, the jobs come your way. But when we move to the UK, I possibly won't be doing any weddings. See my wife nodding her head right now. <laughs> no, we won't be getting any weddings when we move to the UK, Andrew. That is right. You're just going to do your paintings of the Scottish Highlands and learn how to do French Impressionism. Yeah, that's going to be fun. I'm a bit of an adventure of sorts, so I've decided that when we move to the UK, we might buy a spider which is a three-wheel motorcycle and travel around Europe on that. I ride a motorcycle here in New Zealand and I really enjoy it. So I think it'll be a really cool thing to do, to be honest. And Kathy would be able to drive it too, because here in New Zealand you can drive it on a car license, which is pretty amazing. I'm just going to um, get it down to that level there. How's that looking? But I'm not going to go underneath the canvas today because I'm going to have to take the canvas off, so I'll paint under there later. <laughs> 